Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and last week I alluded in my video that I've been going through a lot of personal issues and I would like to keep those private. That being said, my private life has changed in the past uh, five to six months in ways that I would have never predicted and that coupled with COVID, staying home, um, not shipping, not traveling, has really impacted the way that I function on a daily basis. And I thought it was only fair to share with you guys sort of at least a, an inkling of what's happening in the fish room and in general. Now, while all of this has been going on, I have been doing all of my maintenance. I have been feeding the fish. I have been taking care of the tubs. Everything like that is continuing as usual, but I found it very difficult to really focus on the minutia of some of the finer details of maintenance, things like algae removal, duckweed removal. Um, I've basically just been making sure that the aquariums and everything stay healthy, making sure the fish are fed, but I don't have any extra mental energy to really do any more. Um, I'm sure that many of you can relate to this. When things get difficult, you sort of go into a mode of self-preservation and it can make it really, really difficult to to do more than the bare minimum to keep things going in a healthy manner. Now I've shown you guys my aquariums over the past few months. I know my upload schedule has been a bit erratic and a bit sparse and I'm hoping that over the next six months um, I will get back to normal, find a new normal, establish a new balance. You know, these are really unprecedented times. Normally I'm used to traveling a few times a month to give lectures and meet you guys. I've done some Zoom meetings. Uh, but I'm not ordering things, I'm not shipping things, I'm not going out to get things, and it's really, really deflated my enthusiasm. Um, so I think we're going to be entering into um, a new era down here in the fish room, and I'm not quite sure yet if that means I'm going to consolidate and downsize. I'm not sure if that means I'm going to restructure. I really have no idea what it means. I've been showing you guys or alluding to it on my Instagram over the past few months that I've just been spending a lot of time trying to really connect with nature and get back the the things that inspire me and that made me fall in love with this hobby from the beginning. And I'm planning on sharing a lot more of those sorts of journeys with you guys, finding inspiration in nature, looking at underwater footage, seeing natural habitats, and really reconnecting with the, the things that make this, in my opinion, the best hobby out there. And I, I really appreciate your guys' support and understanding as I'm sort of figuring out life right now. And again, I appreciate you respecting my privacy. Um, I did want to show you today uh, one of the aquariums. If you guys remember back when COVID first started, I issued a challenge, the Escaping from Scraps Challenge, and I created an aquarium all from materials I found on my fish room floor and it was super fun and many of you played along as well and if you're interested in seeing any of those videos there's a lot of creators a lot of fans and a lot of people that just participated and it was super fun and inspiring there's a playlist on my home page um, but today we're going to be looking at the escaping from scraps tank as I set it up and I've been feeding and maintaining it, but I have not been doing any of the normal maintenance that goes into preventing any algae growth, especially in a newly set up aquarium. And it's gotten kind of out of control. So we're gonna take a look at that and I'm gonna tell you um, what I'm doing in voiceover and then we'll get some glamour shots of the fish that are in there. Um, as always, I hope everyone is staying home, staying healthy, staying safe and really making sure that you're taking care of yourself as well as your critters during these really difficult and unprecedented times. As always, thank you again for the continued support and I look forward to sharing a lot more of my outdoor adventures with you guys as well as the evolution of what's going to happen down here in the fish room. So now back to what this channel is about, aquariums. This is the 20 gallon long scrapscape that I made a few months ago. Um, Again, as mentioned, I've only been doing bare bones maintenance, which means a lot of hair algae has developed, which is really, really common in a new setup, especially if you don't stay on top of manual removal as the plants establish and everything sort of finds its new normal. Um, so I just start by doing a really good manual removal with my hands and a net of any duckweed, uh, hair algae, 
decaying plant matter or things that really just should have not been left in the aquarium. Now the fish in this aquarium are doing awesome. The rainbows are spawning. Everybody's looking really good. It's just the tank itself is looking a bit rough. This whole process takes me maybe five to 10 minutes and really makes a huge difference. Again, I'm removing any dying plant leaves and any clumps of algae before I bust out any additional tools to work on this aquarium. Up next, I pull out my handy 99 cent bottle brush and just twirl it through the plants. I find that this is a great way to remove filamentous algae without disrupting the plants. And I even use it to clear off the sponge filter of any filamentous algae that have accumulated there. Um, I just, as I'm doing it, twirl the bottle brush and it pulls all of those little fibers off of the hardscape, off of the plants, and out of nooks and crannies. I'll also take this opportunity to use it to polish some of the high spots on the rocks where maybe some algae has grown. All in all, it's again a really quick process and one of my favorite tricks for maintaining aquariums. At this time as well, I may wave it around with some of the deeper pockets of the aquarium to disrupt any accumulated debris so that when I get my siphon out, I'll be able to remove that easily. Up next, I take a siphon tube and I take the siphon off of it. And as I'm vacuuming, I'm pinching the hose so that I'm not removing too much water, but I can get really targeted cleaning. As often as uh, driftwood matures, it lets off a lot of debris, especially underneath any sort of rocky areas. So I'll use my finger and swirl through the substrate as well as dig into the sand with this tube to disrupt any of that mom and debris so that I can do a really targeted vacuum while only doing maybe 30 to 50% of a water change. I then tuck my plants back in, inspect it for any more spots that need attention, wipe down the glass and start my refill. Now, because I have a well, I don't need to utilize any water conditioner, but if you were doing this water change and you have city water, you wanna dose that for the total volume of the aquarium with your water conditioner before you start. I try and aim my hose off the back glass or an area that I know is really clean, so not additional detritus and mom and things like that get suspended into the water column. Once the tank is totally refilled, I'll let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll take a closer look. I'll go back and spot clean anything that I've missed and maybe do some targeted uh, siphoning as well, then finish refilling. Now after about 15 minutes has elapsed, you can see that this aquarium looks radically different than it did. The vast majority of that algae is gone. Now there are some captured air bubbles, but those will go away in a matter of a few hours. The fish are out and about looking happy and healthy, and this aquarium has a better shot of doing well going forward. Now I am going to try my best to keep up more on the maintenance of these aquariums. I think I'm going to try and pick one every day and do this so that we can get everything back into tip-top shape. I do think it's really important for everyone to remember that when life strikes, it's okay to sort of make a hierarchy of needs of things that need to be addressed and really prioritize. Of course, we need to maintain the health and well-being of our critters, but sometimes it's okay to let things slide a bit as we focus on ourselves. Um, as always, thanks again for your continued support, and I will see you in my next video. I am going to be going off-grid for about 10 days, so I'm not sure exactly when that will be.